I have no rights to give you permission, and if I did, it would be no. And then Jennifer got on the phone and said, my permission is not yours. You are not to cut the tree. Well, they said, we are going to do it anyways. So I reminded them that the laws they use to get their will done are the laws used against them when they appear at the pineal court. If nothing matters but you, well, here nothing matters called you. So you had a choice on earth of paradise, purgatory, or Pacific. Your choice is denied. Your destination is Pacific. You have nothing to say in the matter. Just like you give nobody a say in their matter. And they proceeded to chop off the tops of a whole bunch of trees, which are part of the 49... Sitka spruce along the front of the house. However, in order to uh, uh, do something in return for the protection of the police, they gathered up the cuttings unlike what they did last year, and cleaned up. That's the only difference from what they did last year, and since they did it last year, there it was no need to do it this year. There's they normally work off an eight-year cycle. But it was strictly to show that they're a team. So how much they, they came by, and you said last year, and that's when they were staying Last the year, they created a spark on the wire First of all, the, the family that used to live across the street, Gorel, disappeared. Then another guy moved in and painted out the name Gorel from the mailbox. And then last fall, there was a storm, either last fall or last spring, I don't remember exactly. There was a storm, and I saw a spark on the wire in front of the house. And I went outside to look, and it was somewhat raining a little bit, and the guy across the street was coming out of the trees in front of his house, directly in front of where the spark occurred with a ladder, and his house is fed electricity from this side at exactly that spot where the spark occurred. 
Immediately following that, a hydro truck showed up while I was still out on the road. I showed them where the spark was. I said, I don't know what this guy was doing, but he walked out of the bush uh, in front of his house with a ladder. Uh, and uh, they basically ignored what I was saying and said, we're going to have to trim the trees down around the wire. So I said, although I'm not a customer of Hydro and you're on our land here, if there is a danger, I will allow you to cut just what is necessary for your purposes. They did cut and all of the material that came down, they left where it fell. And I got shit the next week from the township for not cleaning up the gully out in front of the house so that the tractors that cut the gully clean could get by. Later, um, in the day after cutting it, um, I saw the guy across the street talking to the people who had been in the truck that came, that came from Hydro. And obviously, they knew each other. Then, two or three months later, after I had cleaned up the entire gully, um, no, before I cleaned up the entire gully, um, a truck from Hydro, whose task it is to clean cuts by Hydro, came and parked across the street. And I went out and asked them when they were going to pick up the branches. And he said, we don't pick up the branches if it's following a storm. I said, but it's not the storm that caused the branches. It's hydro that cut the trees. And he looked at me and smiled. And I said, when are you going to pick them up? The city is complaining about the branches blocking the gully. He looked at me and he said with a grin, well, maybe next year. That's when I went out and cleaned it up myself. So... But if I go through the events, their visit would have been about this time last year. And the events in between, I would have cleaned it up in the fall. And that should have done it for eight years. Instead, they... Uh, they wanted to do it again this year. At this time, with the police on their back, they agreed to clean it up. But they were here for most of the day yesterday. The uh, activity must have cost the governments who were paying thousands and thousands of dollars, there was never less than seven or eight vehicles here, and most of them were supervisors of hydro, of the city, of the police, uh, of the provincial government. It looked like 
we were a drive-in theater yesterday. Yeah. Jennifer got on the phone and told them as well, you know, that she was not giving permission, I was not giving permission, and and therefore anything they did was being done because we don't have an army to defend ourselves. And therefore, they are accepting the fact that it's their crime and that the pineal court will deal with them under those circumstances. And this morning, and by the way, uh, with rain following, falling is not a normal time for cutting trees. You never know when there will be lightning. Yeah, it's almost too convenient that it really happens, you know, it's a chain of events. Yeah. But it is not something I do not accept. Michelle came by last night, looked at uh, what had been done, uh, because they had been here last week when there was a threat of doing this. And they said, Glenn, you should start writing a book. And I said, and what would that book be called? They said, Noah Chapter 2 and his neighbors. And if you look at the chart of uh, Noah's Ark, after they determined that there would be a flood. They built an ark, and all the neighbors walked by, and nobody did anything to help. Nobody even asked what was going on. And they said, it's exactly the same thing that's happening with you. And if you look at the chart, what happens after uh, Noah builds the ark is a decrease in the population by about half. Uh, every time we got flooded here over the last few months. Ottawa got flooded. Montreal got flooded. And New Brunswick in the Maritimes got flooded. These are the three groups that are in control of the system. New Brunswick feeds the world with potatoes, frozen French fries. New Brunswick's general population is of German descent. Montreal is the headquarters of the system in French Canada, and Ottawa 
the center of the system in English Canada. And just when they saw the water disappear, start to reduce in Ottawa this weekend, last weekend, a tornado struck in the area east of Ottawa, where most of the people from Montreal who work in Ottawa live. And the cell said, what they give you, they get in return. Yeah, we had threats of tornadoes here, too, over the past couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> so you must have some of the control people living in that area. Tornado is a fairly well-defined strike. It hits exactly where they seem to want to be sending a message. Well, especially if it's awesome in the schools. Sorry. I think especially if it's hitting in places where it's, you know, it's rare. Like, you know, obviously in the Midwest of the U.S., it happens every year. But if we're getting a warning yeah. up here and you're getting one up there, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's even more specific. Yeah. So I think it's more of a message. Yeah. They, you know, they're what we call uh, cosmetic Christians. They go to church, kneel and stand and sit, kneel and stand and sit and listen to the stories and everything and bow their heads. And and then they walk out the door and everything they claim to believe, that they've got to help their neighbor and all of that stuff, doesn't matter anymore. Can you imagine that group of people who basically control life through government coming to a place where three years ago they shut off the power, which destroyed the house through flooding because when the power is off, the flood, the uh, pumps don't work and not only do you not get water from the system, do you get a flood coming up from the ground that can't be pumped out. And never being interested in, in saying, what is the end result of this for the people living there without saying any result that we participate in must only be one we benefit from. In other words, it's not for his benefit that we would offer any assistance. It's for the benefit of our criminal activity, because what we will offer, and they did it again yesterday, the police, if you need something that we can offer, let us know. And I said, yeah, your buddies a couple of years ago offered the same thing. Come with us, and we'll take you to a an agency who works on helping the poor, 
And you can borrow from them the amount of money that Hydro says you owe and pay the bill. And I looked at him and I said, I guess you don't understand the meaning of the word integrity. <laughs> when people donate money to charitable organizations, it's to do charitable deeds to those people in need. What you're offering is an opportunity to borrow money to pay off a fraud, a crime that you're supposed to be halting, preventing. You give money to Hydro, they funnel it through their uh, bureaucratic-owned institutions, such as the company that cuts trees, and that money is then funneled to the U.S. from Toronto into Ohio. And the people who are bureaucrats on the other side do the opposite. They funnel the money into Toronto. And they build things like raptors, because the letters PT are the code for Bell Canada's operation. When you think you're supporting your country, you're in fact supporting your country's bureaucrats. And the bureaucrats have a government. And that government <clears throat> is called the UN. And right now, what is being planned is the destruction of the bureaucracies that exist by the people who created them. And if you understand the Lou at the Sioux, you understand that the beginning is Lake Superior, the end of the flow of water, destructive flow of water, having passed through the Bruce Peninsula in Canada and Chicago, Detroit, Ohio, all of that on the way to where? It's on the way to flushing New York. And what is famous about Flushing, New York? It is that in 1947, they gave birth to a bureaucratic government called the UN. To rule the world on money stolen from each country of the world based mainly on a concept that you genetically engineer people in different parts of the world, such as Syria and Mongolia, and then you make them refugees who then are allowed to enter a country of the system's choice, not the people's choice, as children. And who would deny a refugee child the right to enter the country? And what happens with these refugee children? 
20 years later, they're growing up and our bureaucrats running the border, the tax department, the immigration department, finance department, the justice department, and all the people of the world are looking inside at their own country and saying, I don't understand why it is that no matter what we do at election time, the next batch always does the same thing and needs to be thrown out. But the same thing along the way is always stealing money from the people through the power they have in control of hydro and telephone. Telephone being their spy network, hydro being their bullies. And of course, the easiest way to steal money from the people is to make sure that when they die, there is no one there to claim ownership over what they own if you can evict them while they're alive. And you leave senior citizens alone on their properties 60,000 of which in 2018 had their hydro cut off. You create debt, phony debt, falsified debt to the taxation department, through the uh, uh, border authority that doesn't allow the same privileges to these people as to the juniors who are crossing back and forth. It doesn't do anything in the way of support for an elderly family. What it does is only make sure that when the person dies, a number of bills show up, fabricated bills from all their institutions. And you, they are put in the hands of lawyers who have signed an oath of allegiance to the fraud artists and therefore only negotiate among each other the division of the senior citizens funds or estate. That's what we're living in. That's the system that I have been able to discern with the help of the cell doing follow-up investigations on what I believe to be happening and confirming what I no, it took the better part of 10 years with the help of Jennifer. Uh, I've been able to confirm that it's not localized only to Canada, but also to the United States and England and France and Germany. Everybody is under the thumb 
of a system of criminal activity disguised by the word democracy. And the people's education lead them to so much naivety that it is impossible to get the majority or even a small minority of sufficient numbers of people to make change. Therefore, it falls into the hands of creation. As I was told it should, as soon as I met the cell. But the cell did want, did not want any actions to be taken that would cause imprisonment or death. And what creation wanted was for an understanding of how the system works being distributed as far and wide in every neighborhood as could be achieved. So that by the year 2020, more people, if not a majority, more people would see clearly. They have three choices at the end of their lives. They do not not live. They die in the sense of being on the planet as human beings. However, they do not not live. And the people who are responsible for the problem are now being cleansed by the pineal court out of their unearned roles of living in paradise. The uh, model of that for those who need a model would be what occurred in fires in Northern California in a place called Paradise. Destroyed the entire place was paying rent to rich people in Southern California. Here, we're waiting for the flood. And creation decides it's time. There will be the flood. You ever, think that, you, ever th- you ever think that, for example, you know, like creation's waiting for the case closed, like after you've finished all your investigation, or it allows that to happen? Like if there's still stuff that you have to uncover. No one um, that it seems to have a clear understanding of what creation's um, position is that would say, okay, when this or that occurs, that's when it happens. It seems that creation has a secret that it does not share about what it is it's waiting to view. For 
that for creation to see clearly that its time is unknown to the self. What is it they're looking for? Is, you know, as, as Jennifer keeps telling me, there's nothing missing. Creation should be doing it now. What are they waiting for? But you don't know what you don't know. Well, also it could be just just like how, you know, like in my life with, with my son, for example, I you don't intervene when they're, you know, like you, I could give them direct advice what to do about a situation, but they have to kind of learn by going through it. And you kind of just yeah. observe, you observe them as they're going through it. And you might, you know, push them a little bit in one direction if they're on the right path, but you also have to let them see for themselves so that they really appreciate their answer or whatever yeah. the question you're asking. So it could be in a sense like that where we think that we know something, but, I, you know, if... Yeah, well, the, the cell, I think I've told you before, the cell told me a long time ago there that... Um, until you're 40 years of age, you have not seen all of the evidence that you should have seen to make a decision. There's always missing pieces. But at the age of 40, you're stuck in a career or lifestyle. and you ignore the fact that you're seeing it. Just like this gang of policemen and and bureaucrats and people with chainsaws cutting trees did yesterday. They're they're too much into you know, when do I get a weekend off? Where is my cottage? Do I uh, end up with a pension sufficient to allow me to do what I want to do? That's the only thing on their minds after 40. But that's the time at which they ignore the signs. That's the cell's view of things. And I, having been through that, have to agree. I have to agree mostly because I was kept out of the rat race from uh, about the age of 30 to 40. And that gave me an opportunity to bond myself to the concept that we were not a democratic country ruled by law. And right now, I'm almost double 40. Yeah, double the overstanding, understanding, very standing. <laughs> yeah. But there's so many layers to it, right? Because it has to be. Because we can only think yeah. about what we can imagine. Right. But I remember yeah. you were saying in another talk something along the lines of like, creation gives instructions to the pineal cord and the cell carries out those instructions. Yeah. So they're really and I what I'm doing on the front field here basically is um, a representative version of what people need to know if they're looking to know. And the, the concept uh, is, is basically the concept of Noah's Ark. When I built the raft in the period after I met the cell, and um, most of the people who would stop by on the road to ask me what I was doing were none. 
and they are usually uh, were not dressed as nuns, or they would not get information they were looking for. So they dressed as normal women, uh, but noticed that I was four feet above ground and walking on the raft, and therefore uh, they undid, unbuttoned the top buttons on the blouses and stood stood at the base of the raft looking up at me, looking down at them. So there's a phone call coming in, but it's some sales organization. So. Uh, yeah, the, the basic concept of what we're doing is for people to see that there are chairs there now lined up in certain positions that allow people to sit in and be passive and let whatever happens happen. Well, at my end, the concept was that we are on this planet because cats made it possible. I'm not going to repeat the whole story of cats. The difference is the cats that were allowed to, who made it possible for us to survive, even when people have good faith and want to do something, what occurs is usually for the benefit of the person, not the cat. And what is considered to be a solution to that is to have a place where cats can enter and leave their home, go into a confined area, walk around people who would be sitting in chairs and decide which ones they would prefer to sit with. Hmm. Instead of the other way around. But in order to do that, I have to prepare the property to basically accept that concept. In the concept of there being nobody there, there is somebody there. Because every person that assists in making that concept come about, can have a chair, and their chair will be occupied by their guardian angel while they're not here. In order for that to occur, these people must say, I agree to this concept, and I will pay the price. The price is you must walk up to a tub that I have on another piece of land rather than this one, um, over on the same property but different place, and deposit a tuning in the tub. From that will follow a chair with their name on it and occupied it is by people who used to live, learn the process, are in 
paradise can become members of cells and they just wait for somebody to come and make <clears throat> make it their seat. So in, in a sense, it's kind of like, we're, we're the representatives in the physical earthly realm and they're doing, they're being a representative on the fifth dimension side, right? You got it. You see, I, I think I told you before that the most important part of a book is the space between the words. And the, why it's important is it defines things. And people who look at, at words in a book say there's nothing there. When in fact, as a typographer, trained typographer from high school, I learned how you make type and how you print sheets of paper from that type in in an age way before uh, computers were doing it. So what I learned was off a system called monotype. And a monotype machine would make uh, letters and, and characters uh, as single units, which you assembled backwards um, because it would print on paper. The letter had to be backwards. Mm. and in between words, you had pieces of metal, spaces. Uh, M space would mean it's a space, the width of a letter M. N space, the width of a letter N, instead of M, which is two Ns, and, and so on. So each space, the difference between it and the letters is that it didn't have a letter on top of the metal. It was just a block that you put in, and it since didn't have the extra piece of the letter on top or the sign on top, uh, you got a space. Because when ink was applied to the surface of the letters, it didn't reach the space down below. So when you print it, you would get a blank. So therefore, looking at words in a book and seeing, quote unquote, an empty space is incorrect. What you have is a character you can't see. It's not not there. It's you can't see it from your point of view, reading a book. The same thing exists with a chair. that is designed to say, I'm here, but you can't see me. Those chairs represent space that are waiting for your understanding. 
and the people sitting in them are not made of the same atoms and DNA and water and electricity that you are. But they're there. They've been here and they've been before here. Here is a temporary learning experience that takes approximately 40 years to understand and 40 years to do with the best you can. That's why the letter eight is two balls, one on top of the other. And the furthest thing discovered by tele telescopes and satellites from Earth is called today Ultima Thule. It's like pancake or a snowman. It's the furthest thing away, which means it was the first thing here. That's why the letter A represents what life is all about. Once you arrive on the planet, you arrive in one of three places. You arrive in a place at the top of the number eight, or you arrive at the bottom of number eight, or you arrive in the middle of the two. If you arrive at the bottom, you want to get to the top, and if you arrive at the top, you don't want to fall to the bottom. And if you arrive in the middle, you basically are trying to engineer your way into the top. That's why they have pearl necklaces, all of these women that control much of the bureaucracy. Pearl comes out of the sea. but it is a sign of wealth. And if you watch TV and watch major announcements, and those announcements are being made by women, most often they will be wearing a pearl necklace. Mother of Pearl. Yeah. Caused well, by irritants, right, that are inside. Yeah. Now, it's important to get this message across to the world that. In the end, should the system continue, men don't win and women don't win. What does appear to be the winner is a human being that contains the parts of women and the parts of men that are necessary for use in a space program. A person 
that can be genetically engineered on Earth allowed six years here and then sent on a voyage probably lasting 18 years in average landing on a piece of rock someplace out in the universe informing through communications home base as to what they found there having been educated to a specific task while sleeping the 18 years on the journey and being automatically fed to keep them alive. So they leave the planet at age six and arrive at age 24, do their research until they're 40, and then a decision has to be made. Should a child be made by this genetically engineered person to continue the work they're doing on that planet or rock? Or should that person be left to expire because at this moment in time there is nothing there of interest that can be exploited? by the people in charge of the space program. That's what it's all about. So no woman, although it may appear sometimes, are aimed at becoming the winners, or men who at some point, because of their physical force and militaries appear to be the winners. None of them are winners. Only a special breed of hermaphrodite trained totally for the task of just explaining. The people who control all of this are currently living in the Moho discontinuity. Their homeland in the future, not the past, but in the future, will be a green Antarctica. The workplace will be the North Pole. Therefore, only the things linked to the North Pole will be the working class. The people linked to the South Pole will be the monarch of the future. The people who live in the remaining after the floods and and whatever occurs in the middle will be a transition place. The people in the north will never have access to the people in the south the people in the South will never have access to the people in the North, and therefore only the people in the middle will walk across from the North to the South and the South to the North of their remaining land, call it you know, Panama or whatever, uh, uh, 
close to the equator, and anything that needs to be transported to the north from the south will be handed over to the people who are in the southern middle, and they'll walk across and give it to the people who are in the northern middle, and they will give it to the boats that are going north, and that's the relationship they have. Actually, Glenn, I wanted to bring something up too. That the uh, you know they had the Canadian F1 Grand Prix over the weekend, Sunday, right? Yeah. And and the ending of the race was basically that the second driver Hamilton was in number in position two, so P1 and P2. Um, there was a little driver error from the guy in first place. So even though he led the whole race in first place, when they crossed the finish line, number two became number one. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> There's a basketball final going on as well. Okay. And the um, um, Raptors who, of course, have our, our, T, our PT in the middle, which is uh, Bell's sign of ownership. Um, we're ahead on the game five started three games to one. Now, Toronto, according to the New York-based headquarters of the basketball league get really pissed off when something like that occurs. It happened in baseball with the Toronto Blue Jays winning uh, two years in a row. The problem they see with um, winners that are not chosen by them is that the schedule ends if the Canadian team wins without the playoffs containing all seven games. Each game lost, the Toronto Raptors had won last night, it would mean that there would be no game seven and no game six. What is important to the headquarters of the sporting league is you make money when people are playing the game and you lose money if there is no game. And in baseball, as it is with basketball now, if a Canadian team ends the series at five or four games to one, five games, they lose game six and lose game seven television revenue. Every industry, restaurant, bar that that provides venues for watching these games loses money. People don't understand that that is billions of dollars disappear. Would the league ever want any playoffs? to go less than seven games, not on your line. Is there anything they can do to stop it from happening? They will do it. Such as bringing out 
uh, a uh, crippled player to play 12 minutes of the opening until he had to hobble off. Human beings to them are irrelevant. What's relevant is revenue. And that's what they did yesterday. And with the 12 points that this triple guy walked away from, 11 points were lost as the Raptors rolled up their sleeves and only one point is needed to win which is what occurred and means that game six now goes on in Oakland and more than likely game seven back in Toronto. That's what they call a small market because it takes all of Canada to make up the marketplace of the major states in the United States. And they don't get most of the money because it goes to a different group outside the country. Did that occur yesterday? Obviously, the facts are the facts. That's what happened. Mm. Yeah. The richest people in the world, obviously, on the end of the line of who gets all the money as it's spent and comes up the line are nuns. They own Wall Street. Donald Trump wants to build the wall. Which wall is he talking about? He's a billionaire come out of bankruptcy. He owes the system the fact that he is once again a billionaire and once without ever happening before, he is the president of the United States. The president of the United States does not get elected by the people. The president of the United States always sees a situation where 45% to 48% of one side loses to another team of 52% to 55%. And therefore, the people who elect the President of the United States are any 5% group that can be assembled in the United States to vote always as they're told. Who is that group? They are the group controlled by the media. They are made up of political types, and religious types, and military types. 
And when it's made clear to these types by their leaders which way to vote, that's what they do. And the 5% goes one way or the other every time based upon the instructions given to them. The democracy is not of the people, for the people, or by the people. Democracy is for the bullies. The bullies that carry the rod And if you read the word hydro, you'll notice that there is a rod at the end of the word hydro. Hydro exists around the world, and it is the bully. You don't do what we want you to do. Or you're in the way of something we want to do, we shut you off. A person or an entire population can suffer the consequences of the bully. The bully's advice and direction comes from the spies. And the spies own the communications network. And that means they own the telephone company. They own the satellite company. They own the communications companies of all kinds, whether they are media or assistance between groups of corporations. The word comes down to them from the nuns. And the word is passed on through communications called media. Everybody gets the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times or Globe and Mail in Canada. And on a certain page, They get the information of who's on top and where to go and what needs to be done. That page is usually called the editorial. The reporters don't need to be told outright. They only need to examine what happens to people who do something contrary to what the editor wants. They lose their job without knowing the details if they insist on telling the truth. That was confirmed to me by journalists, 300 or so of them, over a three-year period on Parliament Hill. 
the fact that I was there and complaining about bribery at the top of the political structure made no difference to them. They did not stop to talk to me. Unless, of course, they came from a country other than ours where to the people reading or hearing through their communications that I was there, it would mean nothing other than some silly protester. As soon as the court decided I was right and laid charges against all of the people that I was accusing, including the chief of staff to the prime minister, four senior senators, four senior cabinet ministers, and many assistants in the system, including the commissioner of the RCMP, the deputy commissioner of the RCMP, and the assistant deputy commissioner of the RCMP, all charged. All of a sudden, the media jumps. Mr. Keeley is important. The dollar falls by a cent. Interest rates go up by 1%. Ren Keeley, the person on Parliament Hill, is the one all the reporters want to talk to. However, when Keeley has things to say that the population shouldn't hear. So within a matter of two days on the editorial page of the Globe and Mail and others later, Everybody involved in the system should look at ways to prevent that in the future. And the laws are changed after a visit of the Premier of Ontario, Bob Ray, and the Prime Minister, Brian Mulroney, so that in the future, nobody should be allowed to go to trial after a Section 501 hearing by a justice uh, without permission from the chief prosecutor, who basically is there to only prosecute the things they want to prosecute, not what needs to be prosecuted. And once that was printed, Two, three days after the charges were laid, Len Keeley's name disappeared. He became the non person of the media. Twenty years ago, I moved on to this property with the reputation I had had of what I had done. You would have imagined that the media, local media, would run out. Just the opposite occurred. After 20 years, nobody knows I'm here except the people who deal directly with me and they don't have the power of communication. So there is no solution. It's basically what we come down to. And the people who are doing this to us should get ready for their demise. Because they've served their purpose and are no longer needed 
in a world of tomorrow. They don't fit in the space program and the north-south concept of a green Antarctica. However, the word Antarctica has simply added the word ant out in front of Arctic. And the word ant, we know, means the people who are living below the plates of the earth and above the mantle that has the ant in it as well. Right now, they're chopping up blocks of ice in Antarctica in order to provide platforms for the people who have caused the problem. And they will be sent floating down out of the Indian Ocean into the Pacific looking for a place where tectonic plates will grab or garble them up. If you didn't get killed by the things you did, and even if you did, your ending is in the Pacific. If you had anything to do with the bureaucracy. The court will play out your pineal knowledge at your expense. And you will walk out heading for eternity where you don't exist, nor your descendants since you all descend into the tectonic plate area of the Pacific. The only chance for survival for the guilty are to get a pardon from a lady sitting in a red chair at the door of the courthouse, a lady whose name is Jennifer Ann Keeley. She is aware that the person named guilty and sent to their demise has, in fact, done what human beings in a democracy should be doing. She can pardon them. And they go straight past the uh, purgatory door and into paradise, which is currently being cleansed of its existing occupants who had no business there in the first place, but sent there by nuns, uh, they are being evicted by the cell. So I leave you. Life begins on the farm with the sunshine. I can go do some of my work, which right now based on our resources, has to be manual work, waiting for the cell or our guardian angels to come through with the funding for the fence, the uh, manual well for water, and a heavy-duty tractor for manicuring the place without the usual 
breakdown that occurs with the smaller versions that I've had over the last 20 years. Lawnmowers, like the last one I bought for $1,800, um, lasts a month on a property like this, mostly because in its history it goes back to the 1700s and 1800s where this place, I'm told, was occupied by a military base sent from Europe called um, um, what's the name of it? Uh, Northumbria Kingdom. And a lot of pieces of metal in the ground cannot be seen until you run a lawnmower over it, and then it bends your blades <laughs> and cuts your your uh, straps. <laughs> Other times we've had all the life of three of the lawnmowers happen when the cheaply made wheel alignment for the front wheels touch a, a um, root coming out of the ground and bends the wheels sideways so that the tractor can't run straight. So I need a heavier duty tractor. Yeah. yeah. So the total of what is required in my summer this year, the last year before 2020, is probably about $25,000 for the three items. And I hope that by the time October comes, we are funded to that degree. Once we do our job, then the cell can do its job on the rest of the property. Now I go back to digging. Because if I can't have a well, I can have at least a pond <laughs> of water big enough to soak my cup in. There you go. Okay. okay. All right. I'll we'll talk to you guys again and let me know if I can be helpful or not. You always Bye are. for now. All right. Take care.